I finally got my hands on the Dexcom G7 Continuous Glucose Monitor. Look how much smaller it is than the G6. The box, the inserter and the sensor. Dexcom says that everything you love about the G6 gets even better with the G7. So let's see if the Dexcom G7 is really that good or if it's just good marketing. This video is not sponsored. I'll be sharing my honest opinion. I'm sorry for being a little bit late, but it took me some time to get some of them from the UK to Switzerland. And I managed to do it with the help of one of my patrons. Thanks a lot, Tommy, for sending me some of these. And thank you, Dexcom, for sending me a couple of these and the receiver. Let's look at the wearable first. So the G7 packaging, the applicator and the sensor itself are supposed to be 60% smaller than the previous version. And they really are a lot smaller. They also have this bright green over patch in the package, which is kind of nice, especially if you are a fan of Dexcom brand color. G7 has this all-in-one mechanism, which means both the sensor and the transmitter are applied with this applicator at the same time, just like it's done with Freestyle Libre. You don't have have a separate transmitter and a separate applicator, which you had with Dexcom G6. But what does that actually mean for you in real life? Well, it means a lot and we're gonna talk about it right now, but let me first initiate my first sensor so that I can show you everything. Choose the sensor side. If you're seven years old or older, use the back of the arm. If you're two to six years old, use the back of the arm or the upper buttocks. But on the Dexcom's website, it says that the G7 can also be placed on the abdomen. So I kind of assume that the sensor can be used on the abdomen, although the abdomen is not listed in the app. Dexcom, could you please make this clearer? Clean the side with an alcohol wipe, wait until it's dry, unscrew the cap from the applicator, hold the applicator firmly against your skin and push the button. You should wrap around the patch three times and gently press on the top of the sensor for 10 seconds. I guess the reason for pressing on the sensor is to make the sensor stick better. Now you see it's super exciting because when we compare the size of the G6 and the G7, the G7 is really a lot smaller. It's not as bulky as the G6. It feels super good to have it on. Hit like if you fancy that new look of the Dexcom G7. It's a bit bigger than Libre 3. It's actually quite a bit bigger than Libre 3. I will compare them in one of my next videos, but I can already tell just having it on my arm. You can use the G7 over patch, which is in the package, but it's not required. I'm not gonna put the patch on right now because I wanna see if it stays on without the over patch, but I will update you in my full review G7 video which will be coming in several weeks if the patch was needed or if I was able to use it without the patch. As you could see it is now much faster and much easier to put the sensor on. But the all-in-one system probably also means that you will not be able to restart the sensor and extend the lifetime in an emergency situation. Another new feature of the Dexcom G7 which is super cool is the automated sensor warm-up. On paper the sensor warm-up is 30 minutes but in real life you won't really have to wait full 30 minutes to get your first battle course reading after you've applied the sensor. You probably won't have to wait at all in most cases and have a seamless transition from the old sensor to the new sensor. So not two hours like with the Dexcom G6, not one hour like with Freestyle Libre, not even 30 minutes but zero minutes without any gaps in your graph absolutely smooth transition from one sensor to another. I know it sounds unbelievable, but it's true. So let me explain how that is possible. Well, it's possible because as soon as you physically apply a new G7 sensor to your body, the 30 minute warm up starts automatically. There is a tiny magnet in each applicator and there is a similar magnet built in each sensor. When you apply the sensor, the magnets get separated and as soon as they get separated, the timer starts ticking. See, I applied the new sensor several minutes ago, but when I now go ahead and initiate the sensor in the app, it only shows 17 minutes because 13 minutes already passed since the moment I applied it. I no longer have to start a new sensor in the app. It's all done automatically. And you can apply a new G7 sensor while your current sensor is still running. So that when the old sensor ends, you just switch to the new one 
and have absolutely seamless transition without a gap in the graph. We'll look at my first reading from the G7 app just in a minute here. By the way, if you have any questions about the G7, you can chat with me directly anytime at patreon.com slash type one talks. I usually respond within a few hours and I can tell you how exactly you can get your hands on Dexcom G7. First I want to talk a little bit more about the wear time of the G7 sensors. And this one is a bit of a bummer quite honestly, because the G7 still lasts only 10 days, although Dexcom has been promising and trying to extend the wear time. But what you can do and what is a really nice feature is that they allow for up to 12 hour of extra time. They call it a grace period during which you can still get the blood glucose data from the sensor. So technically the G7 wear time really is 10 and a half days. The 12 hour grace period is actually super helpful because one, you are a bit more flexible. So when you're in an important meeting on where you feel like sleeping in the middle of the night, you don't have to get up to change the session and initiate the new one. And two, if you're like me and your Dexcom G6 was terribly off during the first few or several hours of the session after you applied it, you now have 12 hours when you can leave the new sensor on without having to getting the data from it and you can let that 12 hour time run and let the sensor settle. So I think the best time to apply a new sensor is when the 12 hour grace period on the old sensor starts. And when the 12 hour grace period ends, you can just switch to the new sensor, which already warmed up and settled. Okay, so the warm up on my first G7 sensor ended and I'm already getting the reading in my G7 app. So exciting. I've been waiting for this for years. So the G7 shows 5.0, the G6 shows 6.8, and my glucometer says 4.6, and that's all in millimoles per liter. I will put the numbers in milligrams per deciliter on the screen. That's a bit of a difference. So let's talk about the Dexcom G7 accuracy next. The G7 has the mean average relative difference 8.2, on arm and 9.1% on the abdomen. And that's nothing groundbreaking because the G6 already had the accuracy in the 9% ballpark. But to be fair, anything below 10% is excellent. So no complaints here because most glucometers are not even as accurate as 10%. My real life experience with the accuracy will come in the next review video of the G7. But what actually improved quite a bit with the G7 is that the average lag time between the G7 reading and your blood glucose is only three and a half minutes. So your sensor readings from the interstitial fluid are only lagging three and a half minutes behind your actual blood glucose readings from blood. And I think this is as real time as it can get. What is really cool is that the G7 will be able to pair with three devices, your phone, your insulin pump if you're using one, and the G7 receiver or your watch. By the way, the receiver also has a bright green cable and it feels really nice in the hand. It's very light. To be honest, I really like it and I'm sure you're gonna like it too if you want to go with the receiver. Which to be honest, you don't really have to because the new Dexcom G7 app for your phone has some major upgrades. The phone app has been fully redesigned and it looks like it now has both real time and historical data, which earlier have been accessible only in the Clarity app. Both the phone app and the Apple Watch app got a new look. And I have to honestly say that I'm pleasantly surprised. They both look very sleek and modern, not like a medical device anymore. There are not so many companies in the diabetes space who can create such a seamless user experience like Dexcom seemed to have done with the G7. The phone app has four tabs, glucose, history, connections and profile. And it also has these three dots here. When you click on those, you have quick access to the alarm settings. Here you can adjust the alarm instantly and completely silence the alarm for a certain amount of time whenever you need to. So a really cool and practical feature. Another nice option of G7 is to use two completely different sets of alarms and switch between them. You can also enable or disable critical alerts depending on whether or not you want to be alerted when your phone is in the do not disturb mode and delay your first high alarm. I'm sure that all these upgrades will help you reduce any kind of alarm fatigue that you might have experienced in the past with any CGM sensors. Especially the first delay high alarm. Because if you eat a carby meal and forget to pre-bolus, you know that your blood sugar will go up 
and then it will return back down. You don't need to be alerted about it. With the G7 Dexcom lets you decide a lot more what kind of alerts you want to use and to when. So it is a lot more flexible. Good job Dexcom. Now obviously the Dexcom G7 will not work with insulin pumps for the users who are looping right out of the gate. And Dexcom is working hard on making this integration possible. When the integration is there, people who are looping will be able to switch. The Direct to Watch is not yet available either and will hopefully come with one of the future updates. You can still share the data from the G7 with up to 10 followers. Not much is really changing in this area. My first impression of the Dexcom G7 is that Dexcom has really been listening to what users want and made a lot of nice little changes based on their feedback. They are definitely putting much more control in our hands and you can choose how much of this customization you want to do. So how much does this bad boy cost and to when you can get it? When you look at the UK online store you'll see that the supplies for three months cost 559 British pounds. Nice to see that the price tag is not higher as we typically see with premium devices. Right now in October 2022 the G7 is available in UK, Ireland, Germany, Austria and Hong Kong. And the rollout will continue shortly in South Africa and New Zealand and then the remaining countries. But what can you do if you really want the G7 right now and your country is not on the list? The Dexcom CEO says that the easiest way to get on G7 is to get started on G6 today. Which I don't know how that makes sense, but it's actually not so difficult to buy the G7 from the UK website. Just saying. The thing is Dexcom G7 is not the only real-time CGM on the market. You also have Freestyle Library 3 which is very new. So click here and watch my full Freestyle Library 3 review next. I will see you there. Ciao!